And welcome to worship this morning. We welcome all visitors here this morning, and we're glad you are here. All of you are most certainly invited to sign into the um, black pads that are located at the side of your pew. Send them through the row and back, and uh, if you don't recognize a name or a face, just reach out and uh, welcome each other to worship. We also welcome everyone who joins us on television this morning. We're glad you found us also. Today is Bible Sunday, and uh, as you can tell, there's a couple boxes already that came in, and we ask you if you have Bibles that need retirement to please share them with us, and this one has been well versed and read, which is a good sign. Our third graders will receive brand new Bibles, and they still crack when you open them. I would like them one day to come right here to be retired because they have read them so much. That will be a wonderful sign that the Word of God is alive and well amongst the people of Trinity. At this time, I invite you all to stand as we come before God for the confession and forgiveness. You may find those words printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Let's take a moment for silent confessions. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Though you treat us with amazing grace, we're quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Through Jesus Christ, the living word, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. Let us join our voices and remain standing by singing hymn number 650, 650. Thank mm -hmm. you. of the Holy Spirit be with you all. At this time I invite Tim to lead us through the Courier and I would like to remind you that we are with song number 157. Song number 157, not page 157. On song number 157, Thank <laughs> you. 
Diane will be the, the leader, and I'll sing with the assembly. And if you'd join me on the assembly part, please. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Celebrate inserts. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You still need to remain standing for the gospel acclamation. According to Matthew, the 20th chapter, Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first ones came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, 
I'm not doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Now take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Now you may be seated as we join our voices to sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning, boys and girls. Well, today we need the parents' help, I think. Because I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I want to see if you remember some of the things I'm talking about. Does any one of you remember telephones that have a round dial? Can you, either are faces or priceless. They have like a round dial, you stick your finger in there and you turn them around and they flip back. Yeah, you had a toy like that, I bet. You have, no? You saw one in a museum probably. Who remembers making calls like that? You, there we go. Do you still have those phones at home? No? Okay. Now. Well, this one doesn't even have that anymore. Now, when I was your age, okay, I had something where you could put a cassette tape in there. Do you know what that is? Who remembers cassette tape players? There we go. Don't have those anymore, do we? Now, when you walk around town, carefully around the house and you want to listen to music. It usually comes from where? Your, your iPod or your MP3 players, right? Or your iPad, yeah. Who remembers a Walkman? That was really cool when you had already a, D, a CD in there. Yeah, or you had a cassette tape, remember. Now you download your music today, right? Yeah, well, I remember I had to wait for the announcer to be done, and then I hit record, and then when they started talking too early, you were upset because you didn't get the whole song. So you don't remember any of that? You weren't alive. Yes, that's what I thought. Now, do you all know what this is? What is this? A Bible. You know what the Bible is. This one is very old and somebody has loved it well because they have read it quite a bit. Now, unlike all those things I just mentioned, the phone, the cassette players, I actually remember having black and white television and only three channels. And at 8 o'clock, all that was on was news. That's right, I actually was blessed. I had three channels, not just one. Yeah, look at that. So, compared to all the things I just mentioned, the Bible has not changed. All the words that are in here were in there since over thousands of years. Nothing changed. Because God is the same today, as he was yesterday, and he will be tomorrow. So when you get your Bibles, you know that what you will read, they all read many years before you. And then their grandparents and parents and great-grandparents read the same thing. Because God's word is not out of style. It doesn't change. 
It stays the same. And it will stay the same when you sit there and your kids don't know what you're talking about when you talk about iPods or iPads. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I'll wait for that moment. So God's word stands forever. It doesn't change. It reaches all people all the time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your unchanging word, which tells us that you love us always. And that has not changed. You told the first people, Adam and Eve, that, and you will tell the last people the same thing. While the world around us changes all the time, very rapidly, you will be the same as you were yesterday and as you will be tomorrow. For that we give you thanks. Amen. Thank you, my friends. You may be seated on the other side. Anniversary, you guys. Ooh. Thank you. I didn't remember it. Yeah, I did not remember. You remembered my after I reminded him. I'm in trouble today. But you know, today's today's gospel writer points out that God is graceful, so you should be graceful too. I am. Yeah. Of course, I forgot too. Yes, you forgot too. That's good. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We forgot the jingle change besides our anniversary. Hmm. We'll do that at the end. When? On the way up. Oh, okay. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In regard to today's gospel, I'd like to start with a question. Looking back at your childhood, did you get the allowance? Yes? No? Yes? I got one. I didn't. You didn't? Well, here is how it worked. When I was a child, my allowance was usually the weekly reward or the weekly pay for some assigned responsibilities, duties, or chores. When I was a child, I think probably five years old, I got the equivalent of maybe, I guess, one dollar. No, I, I lived in Germany, so I don't really know. But I think I got the equivalent of one dollar for picking up my clothes and my toys. When I was eight, I may have gotten five dollars a week for picking up my toys and my clothes, for doing my homework, it was always the most important thing, and for feeding or walking my dog. And when I was 14, I may have gotten between 10 and 30 dollars a week for picking up my toys, for doing my homework, for feeding the dog. I didn't walk him then anymore. I don't know what happened in between. And for <laughs> mowing the lawn or shoveling the snow. The point I'm trying to make is this. Chores and allowances may teach us from an early age that in this world economy we have to work hard in order to receive a reward. Right? Dear friends, it is in such a context a context of a world economy where we are taught that hard work, hard work eventually pays off, that we struggle to make sense of today's gospel. I think that's the reason why today's parable or today's story of the workers in the vineyard is so unsettling. 
It's so unsettling because it is so counter-cultural. Just think about it. For most of us, it is easy, if you are really, really honest, it is easy to identify with those grumbling, angry, complaining workers. People who worked all day long, all day long, from sun up to sun down. Workers who put maybe between 12 to 15 hours into their labor, who worked through the heat of the day and then, and then, after working so long, they watched in amazement and in shock as some losers, some losers who only worked for one little tiny hour, got the same pay as everybody else. So what would you say that would happen to you? That's not fair, right? It's not fair. Just think about it. There are some people who worked for one hour and others who worked 15 hours and they got the same pay. It's not fair. Dear friends, today's gospel is a great reminder that in God's kingdom, fortunately, life is certainly not fair. At least not how we define fairness. It's not fair in God's kingdom, and I have my doubts that life is fair here on earth. Somehow God doesn't seem to be interested in fairness. I think he's more interested in justice and in generosity. Just think about it. While we may assume that all people are born equally, with equal rights, there's no denying, there's no way around the fact that we are not all equally born. Now we have the equal, we are equal, but we are not equally born. Some of us are born into money and comfort. I think most Americans, if you compare yourself with the rest of the world, we are actually, even if you are poor here. There are some people who have to get by with maybe 20 or 30 dollars a month in some countries. They have to feed the family with 30 dollars a month. In Myanmar, for instance. I talked to somebody who lives there last November. So some of us are born into comfort and money, but most of the world population is not. Some of us are born with the grace and strength of athletes, while many people are born with physical disabilities that make every day a championship challenge. And some of us have intellects that stretch and soar as far as the universe. Think about people like Stephen Hawkins. Haw Hawkins? Hawkins, right? Or Einstein. While many, many other people have minds with hurts and holes. And last but not least, like in today's gospel, some of us, if we are lucky, if we are lucky, get picked, get picked on that first round, at that first hour in the morning through the marketplace. But many of us do not. 
The truth is, and I just talked to somebody like that last week, many of us may feel left behind. We may feel left behind struggling to find meaningful work or some employment that would pay our bills. We may also struggle to enter into meaningful, lasting relationships. And so we are left behind with a sense of worthlessness. If we are really honest, honest about ourselves, we have to admit that any one of us any one of us may suddenly find ourselves alone, like those left behind workers who stood in that marketplace all day long and nobody picked them up. Nobody needed their service. We may find ourselves left alone and unclaimed at some eleventh hour of our lives. If that's the case, if you are one of those people who struggle with a sense of self-worth because nobody appreciates you or because you feel left behind in the marketplace or left behind by friends and family or even worse, left behind by the church, I sometimes run into those people. I was sick and nobody cared. Today's gospel has great news for you. The great news is that ultimately, ultimately, in God's kingdom, nobody will be left behind. And nobody, and that's even better, nobody will get what we deserve. That's great when you are perfect, right? But if you are not a perfect being, it's good news. Nobody will get what we deserve. We will get so much more than that. And last but not least, because God, and that's the main point, because God is graceful and merciful, nobody at the end of all times will be left empty-handed. To God's grace, everybody's needs will be met and everybody will be cared for. That's really great. That's the great news we celebrate today. But, but I wonder, you know, when you close your eyes and you think about what is lacking in your life, um, you may find something. You know, yesterday, um, Saturday evening, the population of that um, worship service is much older. And when they close their eyes, many among those people struggle with physical challenges. And for them to know that one day God will take care of them and give them so much more than they have right now, give them what they need, that's comforting. But you don't have to look at all people, you can look at young people. I know that young people struggle in school. Young families struggle to make relationships work. Sometimes we feel really empty. And the good news is that one day God will come and do what we can't do. He will fill our cup and he will meet our needs. Another question that came up for me, because now this is what will happen one day, right? But what does it have to do in our lives? How can we apply um, God's kingdom logic, I would call it, in our lives? I had to think for it for a long time, but it reminds me of a company in Germany. My nephew is working in that company. He's one of uh, the vice presidents. 
whose management is extremely intentional, intentional about hiring many people, as many people as possible, who suffer from what I would call mild physical or mental challenges. My nephew told me once that at least 15%, 15% of its workforce consists of people who may not be as productive as the average person, but they will get the same wage as everybody else. And while the management of that company is doing everything to care, to take care, well, to care for its employees, they treat them like family members. Their employees do everything to make sure that the company keeps going. They are extremely committed, extremely dedicated to that company. They would go through hell and back if they have to because they know the management cares. Now, living in a world economy, I know that you cannot always apply that kind of logic in the world market. But you may be surprised how, surprised how many employers, how many managers have great Christian values and because of that, they do what they do. For many people I talk to, when they have a business, it's not about the money that they make. That's always important. But often it's even more important that they feel that they have a certain responsibility toward their workers. It's especially true in mid-sized and small companies. If you don't remember anything, remember this. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us a story, not about us. It's never about us, but about God's generosity. And he is challenging the common assumption that God rewards people according to what they have earned or what they deserve. And that's great news. I want to conclude by saying that I truly believe, I truly believe that we would enjoy life so much more if we would choose to see ourselves and if we would choose to see others that way through the lenses of today's gospel that points to a graceful God, a God of goodness and generosity. And if we see ourselves and others that way, we may live more joyfully, and most important, we may live more generously. More generously. May God bless us with generous hearts and generous minds. Amen. Let us stand together and sing number 779. 779, we'll be singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. <laughs>
retired, and then I will call upon the presentation of the milestones. If you haven't read yet how you properly um, retire a Bible, then I'll share it with you one more time. You should not be burning it. If you can give it away to someone that doesn't have a Bible, that's ideal. Um, please also don't throw them away. What is done properly is that we uh, will actually bury them on land, and all my farmers are always happy if they get a box because it's going to be holy ground after that. <laughs> all ground is holy since God created everything. Um, but that's the origin comes from the first verse, uh, it, or from a verse in the first chapter, where we're made from dust and to dust we shall return. And that's true for the word of God. Um, so they will be buried and they will disintegrate and then will nourish the ground that brings forth new growth. And with that in mind, if you still have uh, Bibles that you feel are in need of retirement, bring them over. We have a box right in the narthex. At this time, please join me for a word of prayer. Holy God, we do not live by bread alone. Your word in the Holy Scriptures nourishes our spirits and guides us in loving you and our neighbor. We thank you for those Bibles and for the joy and strength that you have given, us, given to us in its use. With thanksgiving, we give back to you these sacred pages. In Christ's name, amen. And while those Bibles retire, we have some new Bibles that will be given to the third graders. And I call upon Sandy and Joan as they come forward. Aunt Lana. And I think Sandy will explain it also that the parents, all right, then I will just be quiet, otherwise I'll take her speech. <laughs> And that would be fine. <laughs> Good morning. We're really excited, the Milestone Ministry, because they, the third graders, are getting different Bibles this year, and it is called the Jesus Storybook Bible. So it will be fun for them to read. As we call the students, we will be giving the Bibles to the parent so the parent can fulfill the promise they made at their child's baptism that they will put the scriptures in their child's hand. So come down, parents and student, as I call your name. Cooper Anderson, Braxton Bjorklund, Maxon Bruns, Joey DeCastro, Rihanna Eggert, Maggie Engebretson, Oliver Husher, Emily Lanners, <coughs> Levi Olson, Jack Olson, Dylan Riedel, Carson Snyder, Jesse Streff, Ava Townsend, Chase Ewelling, Amanda Vacanti, and McKenna Williams. And of course, I invite you all to come to our little um, educational moment in between services. This is a little bit different. This group used to get the new revised version, but we found that it's still a little difficult for them to read. So we will do that at fifth grade with First Communion. So you will get the big Bible, I promise, in fifth grade, when we will use it for, um, for First Communion. This time, i like you to just have fun with the Word of God. And it's still the same word. It doesn't change. It's just more in a language that is made for you to read and to enjoy. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And we ask that your Word inspires those hearts in families. 
and uh, sets them on fire to be the word in this world. We pray for a blessing upon those Bibles and the sacred time that the family spend learning about you, Jesus, and the world. In Christ's name, amen. So you may be seated, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Yes, place the Bible in your child's hands, please. I invite all of you to please rise as we join our voices to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of intercession. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Generous God, you claim us as your own, and your church declares your greatness. Make all people who serve you, especially our bishops, pastors, missionaries, diaconal ministers, and chaplains, serving institutions and the military, firm in one spirit. Hear us, O oh God. The goodness of your creation is a celebration of your mighty acts. Enable us to appreciate the smallest of the largest wonders and to be the worthy stewards of all your gifts. Hear us, O God. People of all nations sing of your righteousness. Incite us to commit acts of peace, break down barriers, crush complacency, and stand up to intolerance and other things. Hear us, O God. Strengthen those who suffer, transform pain into purpose, sorrow into courage, fear into generosity, and loneliness into compassion. Hear us, O God. From the desire of our congregation of Trinity Lutheran Church to live as the body of Christ in this world, place among us overflowing fonts and tables, set as a feast for all people. Hear us, O oh God. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace. I invite you to be seated, and instead of the adult choir, we will all be singing together. This is My Father's World, number 824. We'll be singing all verses of 824, and uh, at this time, we're invited to place the offering gifts in the offering plates.
which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite the communion assistants to come forward, also the acolytes at this time. Everyone is invited to the Lord's table as long as you believe that what is served by Christ himself is forgiveness and mercy for our sins.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. A thank you needs to go out to everyone who helped yesterday for the luncheon to make it a great success. If you see people on the street, tell them thanks for coming. I don't know that the line slowed down for about an hour and a half. It was always all the way out the door. It was a great success. Thanks for all the help and the work that all of you provided. It's always great fun to see the community come together for a greater purpose than ourselves because as I said, the money that is received is going out to bless uh, people all around the globe, close by and far away. This was one of the best soups, by the way. I really, really liked it. Thank you so much. And I was impressed how many people worked and how hard you worked. There is uh, still Christmas boxes out in the narthex, so those go to the boys' ranch. Yes, Pastor Dirk, there are no girls at the boys' ranch, so all boxes are to be packed for boys of different ages. Stop by and pick up a box or two if you would like to. Our noisy offering, and I will have the kids start coming up slowly to get. We'll be having them receive the noisy offering for our sending him. Our um, is going to go to the kids pantry, which is also known as the backpack program. Um, we served close. We served last year close to 100 um, students within Lake County. We upped it to include third grade, so we're serving anybody from Head Start to up to third grade, which we anticipate a little bit more than 100 students. Um, we're just at the beginning this year, so sign up is yet a little slow, which is good, bad, or indifferent. And uh, thanks to Sunshine, the prices have not gone up in the, what, four years that we do this. So it's a great um, program, and I think the children enjoy receiving those extra um, food items. Other than that, I have no further announcements. So let us, the children can come up front for the noisy offering. You grab your pots and collect the noisy offering, please, and thank you. As we sing, I love to tell the story number 661. Please stand, 661. 